Welcome to Community Church and our Children's Discipleship Online program. Each week, I keep thinking that we have to be getting closer to the time when we can worship together. But once again, we are so thankful for the fact that we do have this way of getting God's Word to our children and their families. I won't greet you as I have since we started our new children's program, but I will greet you with a new greeting, and it is, Christ has risen. And your response when we meet at that door, Christ has ridden, risen indeed. The greeting has changed because this is Resurrection Sunday. We will be doing this new greeting for the next few months. As I said, this is Resurrection Sunday. We also know it as Easter Sunday. Our lessons this week will cover Jesus' trial, crucifixion, and his resurrection. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, today is a special day for all believers. It is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It is the day we recognize the gift of salvation that all believers receive simply by believing in your Son, Jesus. We thank you for loving us so much that you sent your Son to defeat the deserved death from sin. We know that we can't have eternal life without faith in Jesus, and we know our faith comes to us also because of your love for us. Help us, Father, to hear these lessons and focus on what your Son has done for all of us as believers. Amen. So scene one is our first story, and it is titled Jesus' Trial. It comes from Matthew 27, Mark 15, and Luke 22. It is morning in Jerusalem. Last night, Jesus was arrested, taken to the house of Caiaphas, the priest, and put on trial. Caiaphas, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders tried to find Jesus guilty so he could be killed, but they couldn't. And finally, Caiaphas asked, Are you Christ? And Jesus said, I am. Caiaphas cried, You are not the Christ. You are speaking evil against God. And they all cried, Jesus should die. When morning came, they gathered to plan how to have Jesus killed. Judas had been paid 30 pieces of silver to help arrest Jesus. But when Judas saw they planned to kill Jesus, he was sorry. He went to the chief priest and the elders to return the money. I have sinned, Judas said to them. Jesus is innocent. Don't kill him. But they replied, What do we care? And they would not listen to Judas. Judas threw the money on the floor and ran away. That's our story for today. This is the time when you will want to stop the video and talk about what you remember from this story. Say what you remember out loud because that will help you remember it. Please pause right now and talk about the story. And now we also want you to consider the three regular questions. What did the disciples do in this story? What did Jesus do? And what does God want us to learn from this story? Pause the tape right now and talk about those questions also.
Good morning, boys and girls. It's Miss Sarah back again, and I'm sharing scene two. Our second story comes from the Jesus Storybook Bible, and the title is The Sun Stops Shining. It comes to us from Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 23, and John 19. Please listen carefully as the story is read. <clears throat> So, you're a king, are you? The Roman soldiers jeered. Then you'll need a crown and a robe. They gave Jesus a crown made out of thorns and put a purple robe on him and pretended to bow down to him. Your majesty, they said. Then they whipped him and spat on him. They didn't understand that this was the prince of life, the king of heaven and earth, who had come to rescue them. The soldiers made him a sign, our king, and nailed it to a wooden cross. They walked up a hill outside the city. Jesus carried the cross on his back. Jesus had never done anything wrong, but they were going to kill him the way criminals were killed. They nailed Jesus to the cross. Father, forgive them, Jesus gasped. They don't understand what they're doing. You say you've come to rescue us, people shouted, but you can't even rescue yourself. But they were wrong. Jesus could have rescued himself. A legion of angels would have flown to his side if he'd called. If you were really the son of God, you could just climb down off that cross, they said. And of course, they were right. Jesus could have just climbed down. Actually, he could have just said a word and made it all stop like when he healed that little girl and stilled the storm and fed 5,000 people. But Jesus stayed. You see, they didn't understand. It wasn't the nails that kept Jesus there. It was love. Papa, Jesus cried, frantically searching the sky. Papa, where are you? Don't leave me. And for the first time and the last, when he spoke, nothing happened. Just a horrible, endless silence. God didn't answer. He, he turned away from his boy. Tears rolled down Jesus' face, the face of the one who would wipe away every tear from every eye. Even though it was midday, a dreadful darkness covered the face of the world. The sun could not shine. The earth trembled and quaked. The great mountains shook. Rocks split in two until it seemed the whole world would break, that creation would itself would tear apart. The full force of the storm of God's fierce anger at sin was coming down on his own son instead of his people. It was the only way God could destroy sin and not destroy his children whose hearts were filled with sin. Then Jesus shouted out in a loud voice, It is finished! And it was. He had done it. Jesus had rescued the whole world. Father, Jesus cried, I give you my life. And with a great sigh, he let himself die. Strange clouds and shadows filled the sky, purple, orange, black, like the colors of a bruise. Jesus' friends gently carried Jesus. They laid Jesus in a new tomb carved out of rock. How could Jesus die? What had gone wrong? What did it mean? They didn't know anything anymore, except they did know their hearts were breaking. That's the end of Jesus, the leaders said. But just to be sure, they sent strong soldiers to guard the tomb. They hauled a huge stone in front of the door to the tomb so that no one could get in or out. So boys and girls, that's our story. And now it's time to stop the video and think about what you just heard. Remember to talk out loud about the parts of the story that interest you.
Also, think about these questions. What did the soldiers do in this story? What did Jesus do? And what does God want us to learn from this story? Hello boys and girls, it's Pastor Brandon again. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Let's practice our new greeting. He is risen, and what do you respond? That's right, he is risen indeed. Now we're going to hear the third scene, which is the resurrection of Jesus, or how God raised Jesus from the dead. If you'd like to use your own Bible, you can find the story in the book of Mark, chapter 16, and verses one through eight. Remember, Jesus had died on the cross and was buried in the tomb for three days. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might anoint or bless the body of Jesus which was in the tomb. Very early, on the first day of the week, that Sunday, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll away the giant stone from the entrance of the tomb? There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone that covered the entrance and sat on it. The appearance of the angel was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook, and they became almost like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said he would. Come and see the place where his body was laying. Then go, and qu go quickly and tell the disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you, said the angel. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid but filled with joy, and they ran to tell the disciples what they had seen and what they had heard. That's the end of our third scene. Now, what do you remember from the story or what part stood out to you most? Pause the video now and say out loud with those that are with you in the room or even to yourself, what things stood out to you about this story? Isn't it fun? to discuss and tell the things that we find exciting about God's story? Now let's answer the three questions that we, ask, or that we answer from every story. In this story, what did the women who came to see Jesus' body do? What did Jesus do? And lastly, what does God want us to understand or remember from this story? Always remember, when we ask these questions, God and the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. So listen carefully to what you hear, knowing that God wants to share with you something special. So take some time, pause the video now, and discuss those questions. Now it's time to think about your I wonder questions. There are so many things to wonder from this story. I can't wait to hear 
what you were thinking about when you heard this story. So write those questions down. Maybe if you're calling family, maybe you have a grandma or grandpa or someone else that you're going to call today on this special day, maybe you can tell them what you wonder about this story. Or you can draw a picture or you can write something down and save those things and bring them with you the next time we are able to meet in the church building and we'll share with each other what stood out to us from this story about Jesus being raised from the dead. Also, uh, on the website, there are activity sheets that go along with these stories. Make sure that you have a parent or if you can do it yourself, you can print those sheets and they'll help you think about the story and share the message of it with others. I hope that you have a wonderful Resurrection Sunday and make sure you celebrate the fact that Jesus loved you so much that not only did he die for us, he got raised from the dead, which means Jesus' love wins in the end. Happy Easter. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you sent your son to die so that we could be saved. We know our sins don't make us worthy of your love, but we also know you love us and gave your son over to death so that we could be saved from our sin. Thank you for Resurrection Sunday and for the time we get to spend thinking about all that you have done for us. Help us, Father, to spend more time thinking about you and the gifts that you have given us through your Son. Amen. We want to wish you all a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. This gift given to all believers is the greatest gift we could ever be given. Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, took on our sins so we could have eternal life. We pray that all of you will know that. Christ has risen indeed.